Hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. And I think you've noticed that lately I've been really into working with fabric on a more creative level. And I really discovered that fabric manipulation just opens a whole new world. You know, you can take a piece of fabric and transform it. You can create texture, you can create 3D elements, and you can create really unique details for your handmade garments. But while I was working with fabric manipulation, there were two things that really kind of stuck out to me. Number one, that it can be a little bit intimidating when you first get into that because there are so many techniques and a lot of times you might even come up with your own personal technique, you know, with something completely unique to add to your creation. And number two, while there are so many techniques, how can you actually apply them to the practical garment sewing that I do on a day-to-day -day basis? So in this video, I would love to go over three basic elements of fabric manipulation. We're gonna go over how I gather fabric, how I make flounces, and how I pleat fabric. And I've also prepared for you some real life sewing examples from my own wardrobe to illustrate for you how I use these techniques in everyday garments. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the gathering technique of fabric manipulation. And I think when it comes to gathering, we most often think of this example of how the gathering looks. But in reality, you can actually gather fabric by hand on a sewing machine. You can also gather fabric on your serger. You can also gather fabric by elastic either in the bobbin or inserting elastic into a channel created in fabric. So let's go ahead and take a look. But first, how the fabric gathering works. Now in a nutshell, gathering is as simple as pushing fabric together using various techniques. Now a lot of times you will see that done only on one side of the fabric, usually on top or on the bottom, and the other side is left loose and it creates these beautiful waves. The simplest way to demonstrate that is to do the longest straight stitch on your sewing machine. And once that is done, simply go ahead and pull one of the threads and push the fabric together, creating a ruffle or a gather. You can gather more or you can gather less. It really is up to you. To use more control when gathering fabric and to really ensure that gathers are really nice and neat, you can also use two rows of the longest straight stitches on your sewing machine. Just do one and then the other and then you can gather your fabric again. Now to demonstrate that a little bit better, we can also do that just by hand sewing needle and thread. Simply go ahead and do a running stitch on one of the edges of the fabric and then gather it all together. You can see that the result is a little bit different than from machine gathering, but the idea still stays the same. Now that we're going to take a look at some of the examples where gathering of fabric is used in our garments that we sew at home, don't forget to pay attention to how the fabric is attached. Some gathers are only gathered on top and the bottom is hemmed, and some gathers are gathered on both sides, on top and bottom, and then sewn between two other pieces of fabric, creating a completely different design element. Since I have it right in my hand, let's go ahead and take a look at the skirt where the middle panel is actually a gathered piece of fabric, but instead of being gathered only on one end, it's actually gathered on both, on the left and on the right, and then inserted as the middle panel of this garment, which adds a really interesting touch to this whole skirt. So no longer it is just a jersey skirt, but now it is a jersey skirt with a gathered panel in the middle. Now, let's go ahead and continue with another skirt. This is a three-tier skirt. The two bottom tiers have been gathered, and each one of them has been a little bit bigger than the previous, and then attached, creating this really beautiful and voluminous skirt. You can also use gathered element for the sleeves as well. Here I have two versions. The first one that you see right in front of you is this beautiful suede dress. And here is a really great time to also remind you that thicker fabrics will gather a little bit different than thinner fabrics. And here's the a version number two of the same element, just a little bit longer, and you can see the difference in style that it makes. 
This blouse actually has two gathering elements. The first one you can see right over here that goes into the front shoulder yoke. Now that was supposed to be a bust dart, but instead of sewing that as a dart, it was just gathered and it creates that really nice and romantic feeling. And the second gathered element is the sleeve. So at the very beginning of this video, I mentioned that you can gather in so many ways. One of them is by creating a, a fabric channel in which you will then insert an elastic and that's exactly how these sleeves have been created and then you see that gathered effect around the wrist. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method of basic fabric manipulation which is creating a flounce and a lot of times myself included I have confused gathered piece of fabric with a piece of fabric that was made using the flounce method and there are a couple of differences which you're going to see here in a second so let's go ahead and take a look how the flounce is made. Now if gathers are made by pushing fabric together then flounces are made by cutting fabric out in a particular way in a circular manner. Now sometimes it can be a spiral, sometimes it can be a circle. So here you see I'm just cutting out a really big circle and inside of it you see a smaller circle. Now we're going to cut right through it and then we're going to cut out the smaller circle. Now right now it doesn't really look like much but once you actually lay this piece of fabric flat then you can see the flounce is starting to take shape. Now on the bottom both the gathered piece of fabric and flounce do create very similar wave-like pattern but on the top of the piece of the fabric you can see completely different thing. One is gathered and the other one is absolutely flat. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples. And this first one is basically a very direct version of what we just did, just on a larger scale. It's a really big circle that we're actually not even cutting apart. It becomes a sleeve just as is. Now oftentimes you will hear this being referred as a circle sleeve or a butterfly sleeve. And if you use a really nice and flowy fabric, this is a really beautiful sleeve to be used in a garment. Now the second example is a modified version of that. This is actually a layered reglan sleeve that has been slashed and spread and it has basically become a segment of a circle. Therefore you see these beautiful waves on the end of the sleeve and by layering three of them it becomes even more beautiful and definitely adds a flirtiness to this top. Here I think is a really good time to remind you that the finishing technique also plays a big role. If you use a thick heavy hem on something like a flounce or even a gather detail that can weigh it down and make the ruffle or a flounce less pronounced. But if you use something more lightweight like a rolled hem for example, it adds a more wave-like element. So definitely play around when you're using these designs. The third basic method of fabric manipulation is pleating and there are also different types of pleating. Knife pleating, box pleating and inverted pleating and I absolutely love using this technique for a more structured look especially if you're using fabrics that pleat really well but you can also pleat fabrics that are really nice and light and airy as well. I have a couple of really interesting examples to show you and I hope that you're going to be inspired. So first let's go ahead and take a look how pleating is formed. Now let's go ahead and start with knife pleating first and it's really easy and straightforward. Each one of these segments is one inches wide but you can choose your width. It all really depends on what is the need for your project. And all we're going to do is we're first going to fold along this line and you can finger press it. Some fabrics press like that really well. For some other fabrics you will need a little bit of heat. And then we're going to press along the other line right over here. We're going to fold it in. Then we're going to do the same right over here and then again we're going to fold it in along this line right over here. So as you see we're creating pleats that are being folded in. Again we're going to press over here and then fold it in. And to secure these pleats we're going to go ahead and do a stitch right here on the top. So as a result what we're going to have is pleats that look like this. 
Now here I have two really fun examples how to use pleating to your advantage to really draw attention to your garments. This first one is the most recent. These were two denim skirts that I remade into a denim jacket and pleating here is really the star of the show. It draws attention and makes it special because otherwise that's just a simple denim jacket, right? Pleating here has a little bit of space between each of the pleats so you can definitely play around with what you like and what looks best for your particular idea. Now in this skirt pleating also draws a lot of attention not only to the bottom of the skirt with a pop of color but also with this flirtiness that chiffon and knife pleats add together. Now here also the contrast between the two fabrics see-through chiffon that is light and also the suiting that is used for the top of the skirt that is a little bit more formal. So definitely a lot of possibilities for something really creative. Box pleats and inverted pleats are also really easy and straightforward. And what I like to do first is to determine where is going to be the center of the pleat. And we're going to mark it with this bold line right over here. We're going to start with a simple knife pleat like we did in the previous example. I'm going to fold it in first over here. And then I'm going to bring it into that bold line that we marked just a second ago. Now what I'm going to do is exactly the same but in the opposite direction. So I'm going to fold it in over here and then I'm going to fold it so that way these two pleats meet in the middle like that. So from this side you're going to have a box pleat, looks like a little box over here, but from this side you're going to have an inverted pleat. So inverted and box pleat is basically exactly the same thing. It just really depends from which side you're going to look at it. And of course on top we're going to secure it with a straight stitch so that way it all stays intact. I also think it's worth mentioning that most of the pleating that you're going to see is uniform. However, you can also do pleating in sort of this freestyle or freeform way. And here's an example of that as well. Now while we're looking at this example, here's a quick reminder that if you are a member of this channel then you do have this reference sheet available for little spaces where you can attach your samples as well as many other perks as a part of your membership. So if you are a member, definitely check out your perks and don't miss out. And thank you so much for your continuous support, I truly appreciate that. Now while all three of these techniques are really basic and really straightforward, I encourage you to take a look at these and maybe use them in your next project and always remember that these techniques will also add the attitude and the character to your garment so for example if you're working with stripes and you have an idea you might use pleating in order to eliminate a color from let's say the top of the garment and then release that color of the stripe into the bottom of the garment let's say if you're doing a box pleat skirt or if you're sewing with let's say blue chiffon and you would like to have this garment a character of a moving wave or an ocean or water you might want to use a flounce or a, a series of flounces on a skirt or maybe on the sleeves to create the movement that you desire in your garment so definitely take a look I would love to encourage you to experiment and I hope that this video was useful and interesting until next time happy thoughtful sewing take a look at this video right over here we'll go over basic hems and how to use those hems in your garment and how to complete them. So until next time, take a look in this video and happy thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon. Bye!